You know, quite often, whenever new games, new consoles, new technology comes out, the old stuff kind of gets put to the wayside because it doesn't really hold up to the test of time. But that's not always the case. And today, what we're gonna talk about is six GameCube games that still hold up today. Hey, what's up everyone, Game Dad here, and we are gonna dive right in with six games that, to me, I think hold up pretty darn well by today's standards even if they may not be the most graphically intensive or most realistic looking. I'm looking at games that are still fun to play, games that still graphically look pretty good, or games that still have a pretty big following even today and even get ports to new systems because of how good they were. And first up on the list is Dave Mira Freestyle BMX 2. So first up here with Dave Mira Freestyle BMX 2, Graphically, in these menus and stuff like that, I mean, it looks just like any other game of the era. But honestly, whenever you actually get in and start playing the game graphically, it's really not bad, even by today's standards. Sure, it has some sharp edges and things like that, but the gameplay is there, it's solid, and the game still looks and feels great. I mean, take Tony Hawk games, but add a bike, and that's what you get, and it works. It's got really cool levels, it's got great music in it, and it's got, like, this one right here is a pretty iconic location with Woodward, and it's just really fun. I mean, it's just a game that you can turn on, do some free riding, or do some of your pro stuff, and just have a blast. And next up on the list, we have a game from one of my top franchises, and that is The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Now up next with The Legend of Zelda, The Four Swords Adventures. What's really cool about this is if you have a bunch of friends and you wanna play this game, you still can. All you need is a Game Boy Advance or an SP and a link cable and you can still play this game without any issues. Or if you just wanna go solo like I am right here, it still works perfectly fine. It is a really cool, like unique take on a Zelda game. It feels very much in the world of Link to the Past, things like that, especially with its art style. But the mechanics of being able to use all four of the different Link characters, it's it's unique enough that it's a lot of fun. And graphically, the game is great. The puzzles are super fun and intuitive. And it's just a good time overall. If you like Zelda games, you would definitely like this game. And in my opinion, this is way better than the later 3DS release that was Triforce Heroes. Where it's kind of the same shtick, but this is four characters versus three. And it's just, it it's good. Next up is a game that I actually didn't even know about until about a year or so ago. And since then, I have been playing it a lot because it is super fun. And that is Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Up next here, we have Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. And I covered this in another recent GameCube video that I did. But this game is so good. It graphically is great. It's got great gameplay. It's got really like ingenious puzzles to it. And just at its core, it's fun. It has a fun story. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And you can just have a good time. And what's really nice about it is they ease you into all of the different mechanics of the game. They don't kind of dump everything on you all at once or leave you to figure out how to do everything. It just lets you play the game and slowly teaches you how to play it at a very reasonable pace. And it's just good. I mean, if you've never played Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, you are definitely missing out and you should definitely check it out. Now next up, we have an absolute classic and that is Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. Up next here, we have Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. And out of all of the games in this video, this is the one where upon original release, I probably put the most time into. And in terms of this video itself, I definitely put the most time into playing. I usually try to get anywhere from five to 15 minutes of footage. That way I can show some cool stuff for a game. But with this one, before I knew it, I had been playing the game for over a couple of hours because I was just having so much fun reliving playing this game again. And 
honestly, like graphic wise, I mean, this is probably the weakest of the bunch out of all the games in this video, but that doesn't matter because the gameplay is super fun. They thrust you into the story of this game and you just immediately are taking over this base and clearing out all of the Imperial soldiers, everything. And it's just, it's so fun. I was having such a blast trying to remember and figure out how to do all the puzzles in here. And I was just having a great time. And honestly, if you were to pick up this game, you would probably have a great time too. And I believe this is one that has gotten a recent port to the Switch or is on the docket to get a Switch port because they brought a bunch of Star Wars games over to the Switch that are from this era. And this game, I highly recommend. Definitely check it out. It absolutely holds up still today. Now, up next is a game that combines all of the best things of the previous three titles in this franchise, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Up next here is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, and honestly, this has the best of all worlds, in my opinion, for all of the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games. I was never really a fan of the later games in the series. I had moved on to other things in life and wasn't really playing these kinds of games anymore. But this one, it had all of the fixes and everything that you wanted to see in the Tony Hawk games all combined into one package. Graphically, it still looks amazing. It's not super blocky or anything like that. Sure, some of the animations are a little funky at times, but the levels are fun. It's got tons of tricks. You have tons of different characters. You have a cool and unique way of doing your whole like campaign mode. Even if you're just free skating, it's still a ton of fun. I'm still terrible at it, but you know what? This game absolutely holds up as a game that you could play today without any issue. And last up for today's video is probably my second favorite game in this franchise, and that is Wario World. And here we have Wario World. And as I mentioned, this is probably my second favorite Wario game, with the first being Wario Land Shake It, but this game is awesome. And it definitely follows that kind of like 2.5D quasi 3D thing. As you can see, everything looks 3D in it, but it is a side-scrolling platformer, but it has depth to the stages as well. And overall, I mean, the levels, they're creative in their design. They definitely play to Wario's strengths as far as just kind of like bashing into things or running into things. And it's just a fun experience. You know, Mario games are a dime a dozen, but as far as actual Wario games, there really isn't much other than, you know, the micro games and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, those are great, but I would love to see another game like Wario World where you can actually go and play as Wario and do a full 3D or platforming adventure like this. Because this game, even by today's standards, I think personally, it looks great. It plays great. The controls, super easy and intuitive. And the gameplay is tons of fun. And there's all kinds of secrets. There's tons of stuff. It's just, this is a great game. And if you have never played a Wario game, I highly recommend that you check this one out. And there you have it, everyone. Those are six games that, in my opinion, absolutely hold up by today's standards. Again, a quick recap. We got Dave Mira's Freestyle BMX 2. We have The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. We've got Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. We've got Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. We've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. And then we've also got Wario World. Now, I would love to hear down in the comments below if you agree with my choices and if these games, in your opinion, also hold up today, or if you have other games and suggestions for things that I could check out for games that actually really hold up well today. And while you're down there, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you think that I earned it with this video. And finally, if you wanna see another recent video, then go ahead and check out this area right here. And as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.